Welcome to the Land of House channel. I'm Seth. Goal Zero just sent over the Yeti Pro 4000 whole house backup power station. Let's go ahead and take a look at all the features of this big power station to see if it's going to fit your needs to power up your entire house. Now the reason they say it's a whole house backup system is because you can actually install the Goal Zero transfer switch and dedicate circuits to this power station and run those when the power's out or if you want to save a little extra on your power bill. Let's start from the beginning. Whenever I unboxed this unit, I just had to simply pop the two support cables on the top, pull the lid up, there was plenty of foam packaging. Now keep in mind, this power station is very heavy. We'll go over that information here in just a bit, but be careful picking this thing up. The unit has a roll around base on the bottom, the unit seems to have survived shipping with no issues at all. All the foam that was on the corners has protected this from any kind of damage. Let's go ahead and take a tour around this power station, starting up here at the top. The power button can be found right here. There's a display that will be visible whenever we turn the power on. Over here, you've got a settings button and a turn display button on right there. The Goal Zero logo can be found right down here. Now there are three compartments that have magnetic doors, which will help keep them closed. So if I open up this one right here, you can see there are two 12 volt DC out barrel plugs right there, and also a typical car cigarette lighter style. To turn those on, you press right here. As indicated, they're all 12 volt. Moving on over here, you've got your AC output, 3600 watt continuous, 7200 watt peak, and that is based on all four of those outlets. In order to turn that on, you just press this button. Moving on over here, these are the USBs. There are six of them in total. You've got your typical 18 watt USB A over here. And then over on this side, you've got one 100 watt PD and two of the 30 watts right there. Once again, that button right there will turn those on. Now, if we move over here to the side, you can see there is ports for ventilation, a nice metal carrying handle, and it does have a grip inside. So I don't know if it'll show up there, but the grip will allow you to have uh, gloves on or not drop this very heavy power station. Now, if you look down here, there's a clip. If I were to pop that loose, I could actually remove the roll around base. So we will try to do that here in just a moment. Moving on over here to this side of the power station, you can actually see the wheels down here, and there's another handle, more ventilation. It seems like it is all metal as well. Very nice. Turning to the back of the power station, there are three more doors we can open up. This one is for the inputs. Starting over here, this is the high voltage DC input, 145 volts maximum input. So you can do up to 3000 watts of solar input right here. Over here, you've got a low voltage DC input, never exceed 30 volts for that one. There is a push button reset in case the breaker is tripped on this. Over here, you've got your AC charging port for wall plug. Now, one nice thing to see is there is a low and a high toggle right here. So a typical house outlet can charge up to 1800 watts. And so you want to keep this on low. But if you have the option to charge, you can charge at a higher rate right there. Moving on to the next door. One thing that's really cool is there is actually a magnet right up in here that will hold this door open magnetically. So you don't have to uh, hold that open manually. There is a 12 volt DC output with an Anderson plug right here. You've got your 120 volt 30 amp output. We'll be using that to power up the transfer switch here in just a moment. And then here is the power plus plug right there. Moving up to the last one over here. This is where you can find the ground, the expansion battery port. You've got a couple of AC breakers and here's the pair button. So you can pair this to your uh, phone app right there. All right, that's a look at the back of the power station. I'm going to press the power button right here and turn this unit on and we can see the display right here. On this side, it's showing there is currently no watts on the input. It was shipped at 86%. There is no output. And it actually says the battery is cold three degrees Celsius over here. It is cold in my shop, so we may have to warm this up before we charge. Let's give it a try. When I press this button, it should turn off the display, and it does. Press it again, and that turns back on. Looks like the cold battery warning has just gone away, so perhaps we are safe to charge now. 
Included with the Yeti Pro was one AC power cord. Now you'll notice there is no big block or uh, adapter with this, and that's because the AC to DC adapter is included inside of the unit. And so we don't have to worry about carrying around one of those big blocks. Very nice to see. It also has a packet here. It just has the uh, information on how to install the app. And there is also a booklet that has plenty of information in the user manual. So we'll go over some of that here in just a moment. I'm going to lift this flap right here, make sure my input switch is turned to low, and it is. Then I'm going to plug this up right here, and that should allow us to charge this unit. Although the warning message went away, I am still seeing a indicator right here, which looks like a little snowflake. Let's see what that's about. Quickly checking the user manual, I see that that indicator shows that the battery state of charge is cold battery. So let me go ahead and roll this power unit into the other room where there is a heater and I warm this thing up even though this room is above freezing. Uh, so the battery just shows that it's too cold to charge. This took a lot longer than I was anticipating. The temperature in here when I started was 45 degrees, well above freezing. I put this heater in this direction and plugged up this heater into that direction and it has taken 45 minutes in order for this thing to warm up enough to get the uh, light to go away showing that it is a cold battery. So uh, well I do know that the AC is working well but we'll get to that in just a moment. So let's go ahead and turn this heater off and we'll go ahead and turn this one off as well and see if we can't get this power station to charge now. There we go. With the low switch turned on, it's got 291 watts coming in and 76%, but it is blinking to show that the charge is happening. So let's go ahead and flip over to the high setting on this switch back here. And we should see this jump up close to 1800 watts. About a thousand watts there. I did hear the fan just kick on. I'll let this sit for a few minutes and see what it goes up to. Looks to me it's going to max out here at 1034 watts and it's going to take 43 minutes for that to complete. So let's come back in 43 minutes. And the Yeti Pro 4000 is now charged up to 100% as can be seen here on the display. Let's go ahead and do a discharge test with the AC power to see how that does. Now normally I like to use this uh, meter, but sadly the uh, door here is going to get in the way so I can't use that. We won't be able to keep track of the time or the uh, power consumption with that. So we'll have to just rely on the display here. So. I'm going to go ahead and plug up this heater and that will be what I use for my uh, load to discharge this battery. Now, speaking of the battery, this is a 4,000 watt hour battery. It's actually 3,993 watt hours, but uh, I think 4,000 would be close enough for our test. So, uh, to find out how long this should run on this heater, I'll be using uh, 4,000. So let's go ahead and start a timer. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure the AC is on here. And then I'm gonna turn this heater up to its maximum setting. All right, that's going. We've got uh, 1,303 watts currently. We'll see if that changes in just a moment. So uh, that being the case, let's find out how long this battery should be able to last here. So if I say 4,000 watt hours times 0.8, because we're only gonna use the top 80% of the battery in here, that's 3,200. So with 3,200 divided by the 1303 watts, that's uh, two and a half hours or 2.45. So let's see what we get. Now the display up here says empty in 3.1 hours. So let's just consider the 4,000 divided by 1303 is uh, 3.0698. So if that's the case, maybe they're not uh, removing that top 20% of the battery. So time will tell to see what we end up with. Uh, 
where the timer here versus when this shuts off. I missed the exact moment that the inverter turned off for video purposes. We've got two hours and 39 minutes. The calculation with 80% of the battery was two hours and 27 minutes. So this unit actually did very well. Very glad to see that. All right, let's move on to the next step of this review. After doing the full discharge test with my little heater, I plugged up the power station and nothing happened. The display over here was saying that there was uh, low voltage for the inverter. And so I turned the machine off, unplugged everything, and then plugged the power cord back up. And now we're getting 1,715 watts. Pretty good input there. It's gonna take that 2.4 hours to fully charge this from uh, well, 6% now. So uh, once that is uh, charged up a bit more, we will continue doing our tests with the 12 volt, more AC, and then some of the USB as well. I feel like that was a successful discharge test. One thing I'm noticing is this thing attracts dust like you wouldn't believe. So I've been uh, just wiping it off here with the cloth. So now that we've seen the AC working and done a full battery discharge, let's test out some of these DC uh, ports over here and then also the uh, USB over here. So first of all, we're going to turn the unit back on. I've put a charge on here to, what was it, 18% I think? Uh, yeah, 18%. You can turn that display on and see that a bit better. Uh, so first of all, I've got an air compressor. Let's plug, well first of all, let's turn 12 volt on. Plug this up. All right, that starts up immediately. Go ahead and press the power button. Used 81 watts up here on the display. All right, good. So that works just fine. Remember to turn that back off when done. Now move over here to the USB, turn that on. And now I've got uh, just a USB speaker. Whenever I plug this up, we should see an output. Now it'll just turn the light on to red so we can see that it's charging. All right, hopefully you can see that little red light down in there. And let's see if it gives us an output. It says the USB is turned on, but I don't see an output. These things only charge at one or two watts anyhow. All right, so that's working just fine. One of the cards inside the information packet says there is a Goal Zero app. However, there's also a card over here that says the Yeti 4000 is not ready yet for the app. So we won't be installing that. Now the Yeti Pro 4000 is advertised as a whole home backup. Now how does that work if you open this up and you only see these four receptacles? Well, if you recall, on the back of this unit, there was a 120 volt, 30 amp plug. And that is to be used with this power cable right here. And this will go to a transfer switch. Let me go over here and I'll show you what this transfer switch looks like. This is the Goal Zero Haven 10 transfer switch. If I lift this case here, I can see there are 10 different switches up here that correspond with 10 different breakers. So if you look at my main panel over here, I have got circuit breakers, as you can see over here, and those are running from grid power. But if I have a power outage and I wanna use my power station to run those circuits, I can flip these switches up here and activate these breakers instead. And those will be run off of this external power source, which is where we're gonna plug up our power station. Now, a transfer switch like this is complicated to install and you have to have an electrician, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like here. And uh, now we can actually flip some of these switches and turn my workshop off grid. So let's plug up our power source to here real quick. I'm gonna roll the Yeti Pro 4000 over here into position so I can access the power plug. And then I've got my big cable right here, which will go from the power station up to the transfer switch. I'm going to lift this lever here, put my power cord into the power station, just like that right there. And then the other end needs to go up to the transfer switch. Now that I have the transfer switch plugged up, it's time to start flipping some of these switches and my lights will go out here and we'll flip them back on and it'll be running from the power station. So let me see where my lights are since I haven't named this yet. All right, there's one of them. I flip that back up, 
Perhaps we have to turn on the AC button here for this to work. Yep, okay. So the AC button on the front of the power station has to be on in order for the output to occur. As you can see, I've got that button turned on there. And now the power station is putting out 286 watts to keep my lights on in here, which uh, are some pretty powerful lights and they require a lot of power. So there you go. I am now running those lights off of this power station. Now, if I wanted to run more and more circuits, I could flip those on and just uh, continue down the line. Uh, this power station only has 18% battery on it, so I may uh, just leave it as is for now. But that gives a good example of how you can do a whole home backup with this power station. Now, a typical refrigerator is going to use around 700 watts. And so you can see that you could easily run your entire kitchen off of this 3600 watt power station. You could run your refrigerator and a microwave at the same time with no problem. Now let's say the storm has passed and the grid power has come back on. I can flip this down to the off position. I could unplug the power station like this right here. And now if I put this back to grid, my lights will come back on here to indicate that uh, everything is working normal. Now this power station is far too heavy to be picking up by yourself. So it's got two big handles on the side, which you can carry kind of like a, a cooler, one person on each side to hold this. I found the plastic over here is a little bit awkward to get a hand into. Um, probably could use being a little bit bigger. Uh, so uh, yeah, it just hits the knuckles a bit. However, the cart does have a push out handle down here. So I can pull that out and simply just tilt this up and then roll it around. And that is a much easier method of moving this. Uh, so definitely keep that in mind that if your unit has the roll out handle, I would highly recommend using that because this thing is far too heavy to be picking up, especially by yourself. Speaking of the cart, if I undo this clasp down here, I can then remove that uh, cart by picking this up and pulling it off of that. Let me see if I can do that real quick. This thing is so heavy. Uh, yep. Okay. So I can put that uh, down there and you can kind of see what that cart looks like. It's got the two wheels on the back. It's got the handle that pops out there from the middle. There's the clasp, it does fold down, and it's got some rubberized feet here to help this from uh, rolling around or getting damaged. And let's see how easy it is to put this thing back on here. Oh yeah. Ugh. So this side over here first. There we go. And then that side. All right, very cool, not bad at all. A few thoughts on the Goal Zero Yeti Pro 4000. First of all, it's very heavy, so be careful when you pick this up because I don't want you to get hurt. It does have a roll around cart, which is nice, or you can uh, buy other attachments for the base of this unit. The menu system is a little bit uh, clunky to work through as far as going through settings, but as far as the display goes up here on the top, very simple. You got your input and your output, and that is quite easy. Now, as far as the ports go, a simple one push button turns them on or turns them off. And as we found out, the 120 volt 30 amp plug on the back is also controlled by that button on the front. So you have to make sure you turn that on as well. Now, there is an app for this machine, but it's in the early development stages as uh, per this video. And uh, so this does not connect to it just yet. So I can't testify of whether or not that is going to be uh, helpful or not. Um, hopefully they have some good things in store for that app. As far as the battery capacity, that was right on spec. The DC ports all seem to work just fine. And also hooking up to the transfer switch was fantastic. No problems there whatsoever. The transfer switch for the UPS inside of this is also very quick. So if you have a computer hooked up and the power goes out, it will uh, transfer the power from the grid to this battery immediately and you won't lose any power from your computer. Now, this thing uh, had some issues with charging when I first pulled it out of the box. My building here has been 
uh, 48 to 50 degrees now for several weeks and this unit still said it was cold. So I actually had to take a couple of heaters, as you saw, and blow into this machine to get it to go. Uh, it's supposed to be able to charge at 32 degrees and above. So I'm not exactly sure what was going on and why this was saying it was so cold. But I would rather have it err in the side of saying it was too cold, even though it wasn't, than to damage the battery. So that's, I guess, a good thing. All right, well, that's all I got for today on the uh, Yeti Pro 4000 from Goal Zero. I will have links in the description down below if you want to check this unit out. As far as a whole house backup system goes, if you buy that cable with transfer switch and this unit, you'll be able to run things for quite some time. Like I was saying, refrigerator will pull about 700 watts whenever it's on, and of course it cycles, so you could run a fridge for a couple of days off of this power station. I'm Seth with Land of House, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.